Alright guys, today I want to talk about how to play destroyers aggressively. And it's not easy to do because oftentimes you'll just get focused down or Time someone will radar you and you'll just die. Bring um, out that he only Montana. Oftentimes destroyers are best played a little bit more passively at the start of games, but sometimes you can make it work. And this is a map that you really can make it work, depending on the side you spawn on, but I, I actually got a really good spawn here. Um, I'm able to use island cover to keep myself safe. Um, and that's what I want you to notice is just how many people start targeting me when I do get um, lit up here in the cap and how nobody's able to shoot at me on their team and I'm able to uh, shoot back at their destroyer. Um, I am looking at the destroyers on their team and I know that in a close range fight I can probably beat any one of their DDs. Um, especially with this Neptune pushing really aggressively with me towards this cap. Um, you always want to keep an eye on what DDs you potentially might be facing and the support they may have and what support you may have. And you always want to take a fight that's good for you. And I know this fight, even if he has, let's say, the, Demo or the Donskoy or the Alaska in support, I know I will be safe from them because I have this island cover. And you're going to see a big difference in what I do versus what the enemy ship does here. And I think it just totally determines the fight. Um, the enemy destroyer is the Yugamo, which is the weakest of all of the DDs that um, I could have been facing here. But I think it still stand the point still stands, even if it was a stronger destroyer. Um, as you can see, I'm already turning to the right just a little bit because I want to keep these islands in between me and any potential enemy ships that could shoot at me. So you see this Yugamo actually turns out into the cap. Um, if he would have done what I did, he probably, I'm not saying he would have lived, but he would have lived longer. Um, he decided to turn out so that my entire enemy team, or my entire team could help support me. And I turned into this island so that as you can see, we had up. We have two targeting now, but we had up to like, I think we got up to four people targeting us, and you know, I take very little damage there, and I win that trade very easily. Um, so playing a destroyer aggressively really requires you to understand where enemy fire might be coming from and how you can get cover from that that uh, fire. And I think this is one of those caps that really just favors my side of the map just like the C cap really favors the enemy team um, you saw I was still spotted after shooting behind that island so I knew that destroyer was coming out um, and instead of just focusing on this cap here I want to shoot at this Fletcher while I can because I can shoot at him for free you see people are targeting me but you know we're up to three people targeting but they can't shoot at me so I in firing at this destroyer and I'm baiting him into shooting me actually can get more free trades on these guys um, it's kind of a 1v1 but I have a bit of my team helping me out on this one but not as much as last time but I just kind of I will win against a Fletcher most of the time in a kid company and especially it helps that he didn't really know how to aim at my ship um, but as you can see I'm just I'm chilling behind this island I'm cognizant of the fact that he could have torped me just like I was cognizant of the fact that the Yugamo torped me and I just pull back into island cover so there's no way I get torped so that's two DDs dead in the first couple minutes and I took very little damage from that and obviously this is kind of a, a golden kind of case here this isn't gonna happen all the time but I got pretty lucky that that Fletcher just decided to randomly push like that to get that kill but I think the Yugamo kill is a pretty common one um, for destroyer players just pushing super aggressively into the cap when they shouldn't have. Um, if I was that Yugamo, I probably wouldn't have pushed as aggressively and I would have reversed into the cap um, from this island that I'm looking at right now. Um, just from behind there, I would have reversed into the cap and then if I got spotted or something like that, I would have just pulled out in, into island cover and I would have been safe. Um, pushing that aggressively, especially in Yugamo, is not, not the best idea despite him having a concealment advantage over me. Um, yeah, and you see, I really haven't used much of my utility. I didn't even pop a smoke there against those two destroyers. And um, using island cover intelligently is 
massive for any class. You see me use it all the time in battleships when I'm trying to push up. Destroyers or cruisers obviously love map um, maps with islands like this where they can hide behind and spam over things. Um, and destroyers maybe don't use it as much because you should be again spotting for your team, but you can use it in situations like that when you really want to go aggressive. And you see how much map control we gain just by them losing those two destroyers, right? They can't push this side because I get to spot them all for free and my team can shoot from farther back at these ships that are caught in the open. Now I'm seeing this Palmer and starting to push in so I pop my reload booster and dump some torps so he can't push out at me and then this DD is again caught in a bad position. Their, their DD is kind of through this game for them honestly but um, I want to shoot at this guy because I can. There's no way for me to get punished by anyone on enemy team, so I may as well just open up. Don't need to smoke. I want to keep spotting him if I can. Um, and we can just bag another DD kill. So, it's not the most aggressive play here, but it's just playing smart and trying to help your team out. I did see that he was pushing through the middle there on the minimap before. And that's kind of why I angled my way towards this side of the map instead of going directly for B right away. And now that their DDs are all dead, we can just have a good time farming for free now. We can open water gunboat because their ships are pushed so far back, and it just becomes really easy once you kill their destroyers. Especially, you know, for your teammates who, you know, in a battleship, you don't really have the tools to deal with a destroyer that well. So in actively hunting their destroyers, you really, really help your team win a lot of games. Despite not dealing much damage so far, we've killed three destroyers, and we've basically won this game for our team. Now, I did have some good help and good support, but that doesn't always happen, and you saw, I probably would have won those fights without support anyway, just based on my positioning alone, and intelligently using island cover to shield me from the enemy team. Um, so yeah, we're just going to push up here into B, and, and again, once, once the destroyers are gone and the radar cruisers are gone, you can be crazy aggressive in destroyers. So we're going to even get within this guy's hydro range because we, we just can because he's just got way too much to deal with. Um, maybe it was a mistake to go so aggressive against this Palmer, but we have so many teammates here that it's, it's fine and we can just help our team kill this guy real quick. And you see how far away the enemy team is, so they can't really punish me for doing this. So it's it's really me against the Palmer and secondaries because his main guns are so inaccurate. <laughs> That's uh, kind of the unfortunate bit for this this guy. He didn't have any support left, so now he's just kind of dead. And I respect him for trying to push in, but unfortunately, <laughs> this is often what happens when you push in without any help from your team. And, well... It sucks for him because his team just kind of died around him. And that happens a lot of the time in, in a lot of these games. So now we've triple capped and the game's basically over. There's nothing they can do. They've been pushed into a corner and they just have some battleships left. And while they could try to push out, this Fletcher and I, our torpedoes will just annihilate them as they try and push alone. Um, I actually don't hit that many torps this game. <laughs> But the awesome gun power of the Kitakaze really allows you to to deal a lot of damage with your guns. Um, I don't actually have IFAG on this build yet. Um, it's kind of a, I think it's a 13 or 14 point captain. Um, I'm taking BFT and um, Survivability Expert instead, just to get that extra health up. But as you can see, we still deal a lot of damage, even though we don't pen 32 millimeters. We just can aim for superstructures and get fires instead. Um, this ship is, I would say, kind of overpowered for this tier. This, this ship's kind of just insane. The torpedo power you have is massive with the torpedo reload boost. You can send out three times, you can send out 12 torpedoes that each do 23,000 damage, something like that. And that, that's just crazy to go with this gun power and amazing concealment. Because as you can see, I have 5.9 kilometers of concealment. Um, the other nice thing about this ship compared to, let's say, the Harugumo, that tier 10, you don't take battleship AP full pens. Um, the Harugumo does, and that can really, really, really hurt you when you get into fights with battleships. Here I'm making sure the Freddy's reversing, and, well, he's probably going to die, but 
I'm making sure he's not going to get into these uh, into these torps because obviously you don't want to torp your teammates. That's just horrible. I got up here a little bit late to support him, so he just ends up going down. But we're just setting up here to kill these battleships as they try and push into sea, and they're basically done for at this point. Um, as you can see, 12 torpedoes. They move pretty quick, and they deal a ton of damage. So even though I don't actually hit that many here because they didn't push out as fast as I thought they would, probably should have held my torps a little bit longer than I did. Um, we still get, like, like we still get pretty solid damage on that Freddy there, like 15k from one torpedo on a saturated bow. That's pretty solid. Now I'm making sure I'm spotting for the enemy team for my team. Um, before I smoke up, um, I'm gonna make sure that all these guys will still be lit by someone else. Because obviously in a destroyer, you don't, you don't want to let the enemy team go dark when you could be spotting them. And in smoking up, I stop spotting them for my team, but there are other people spotting, which is nice. And you can see the gun power is massive. You get crazy fast fire rate, and despite them only being 100mm guns, they actually do a lot of damage. <laughs> These guns are just kind of crazy for tier 9. Um, as you can see, I don't actually smoke up until I start getting some pressure from the enemy team. Um, now we smoke up once the secondaries kind of start from the Georgia and the Freddy. And as you can see, they're all still spotted because we waited until our team was in a position to spot them themselves. So, yeah, pretty quick game here, honestly. Um, not crazy amounts of damage, but um, in killing destroyers, you're helping your team win. And... In the end of the day, that's what counts, especially when you're trying to grind the Slava, like I am right now. And that's why I'm playing this line, is this Harugumo Japanese destroyer line is the fastest to reset, and that's what I'm trying to do right now, and that's why I'm playing this. So this is just a quick game on super aggressive play, and as you can see, I have pretty solid uh, XP and credits from that game, just because I'm stacking camos and flags, trying to get there as fast as I possibly can. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and uh, I hope this helps you think about different things when you're playing Destroyer, and I hope, hope it helps you get better. Have a good day.